Welcome to the talk on personalized cancer care featuring circulating tumor cell analysis. My name is Dr. Susan Hollick and I'm a functional medicine practitioner practicing here in Carmel, Indiana. Our first key speaker is the founder and patent holder of circulating tumor cell testing at RGCC International. This pioneering company specializes in chemo sensitivity and chemo resistance testing with branches worldwide. Our second speaker is Dr. Ray Hammond. Dr. Hammond is an integrative and functional medicine practitioner since 1979. He practices in Rowlett, Texas and is responsible for aiding and distribution of circulating tumor test kits throughout the United States. Yes, we have reached the era where we can now affordably and uh, successfully uh, evaluate the success and failure of selected chemotherapeutic protocol as well as test resistant markers prior to initiating cancer therapies. As you may be aware, science often precedes medical practice by several years. And we finally made it to the point where we are seeing the dawn of personalized medicine. Before bringing to you our first speaker, I want to take a few minutes to give you a brief overview of other integrative medical perspectives that can be beneficial in personalized cancer care. Most of these tests are not routinely utilized in conventional medicine. Their adjunctive use in patient care can augment the success of cancer therapy. As you know, cancer is caused by a cascade of genetic and molecular malfunctions, often caused by more than one type of cancer cell with multiple expressions. Cancer treatment based on one pathway is often partly effective. This leads to us having to rely on our patient's own defense mechanisms to combat any rogue cancer cell lines. We need to strengthen and modulate the body's immune system, properly nourish the patient, address psychoneuroimmune modulatory mechanisms, and balance unhealthy biological environments which have allowed the cancer to develop in the first place. So why integrative oncology? Incorporating integrative oncology into a conventional oncological setting allows us to encompass a broader array of treatment modalities in order to find ways to more gently and effectively augment patient care while reducing side effects from the cancer therapies itself. Integrative approaches can be used at any phase of oncological care, including prevention, treatment, and remission. Next, Biological terrain markers and specialized lab testing can be used in personalized cancer care. Some of the bio biological terrain marker testing categories include measurements of oxidative stress, inflammation, nutrition, glycemia, blood coagulation, immune system balance, stress chemistry, and hormones. I've listed in my handout important biological terrain goals that I may look for. These goals can be achieved with nutrition, natural agents, as well as conventional prescriptives. Lastly, I have given you a list of specialty laboratory testing that is now available to aid you in personalized assessments. In summary, Integrative oncology encompasses a broader array of investigative and treatment modalities in order to find ways to more gently and effectively approach oncological care. Natural substances can be used to combat side effects and minimize deficiencies in biological terrain imbalances. Biological terrain markers can be used to optimize patients' biological chemistry. And Specialty laboratory testing, such as circulating tumor cell analysis, can be used to identify epigenetic and physiological hurdles, which can be modified to benefit patients' health. So enough of my introduction to personalized cancer therapy.
I would like now to introduce our key speaker who flew all the way from Greece to be with us this evening, Dr. Yanis Papastratou. From my name, it seems that I will say things that it may sound difficult to you. It may sound Greek to you. <laughs> I am a Greek, after all, so you have to bear with me. So a little bit of introduction. Um, I consider myself as a Greek origin, but I am half Greek and half German. I was born and raised in Germany. I finished medical school in Greece, but my specialty on genetics and my MSCs and my promotion, PhD as you call it here, is, was in Germany. So uh, we started establishing the laboratory in Greece, but nowadays we have expanded to several countries and the headquarters of the company is now in Switzerland, outside in Zurich for obvious reasons. It's not by chance that all pharmaceutical companies are located there in Europe. You know better than me, probably. First, we have two major sections of activities. We offer clinical services as well as R&D services for pharmaceutical industry. We work in a kind of uh, contract research organization for them. In clinical services, we have, again, two areas. The one area is mainly we offer a series of assays which may predict the pharmacodynamic, which means what the drug can do to a disease, to cancer cells in this specific area. And the second is to offer assays again, tests, to follow up patients. I'll, sh I'll say a few words what we are doing in R&D and what is the major uh, peak of our uh, R&D activities nowadays. Our accreditation. I don't know how familiar you are with the ISO accreditation. We have 17025 for all the clinical services as well as for the R&D concerning these three major sections. The circulated tumor cells. Nowadays, we try to be accredited for the cancer stem cell like, which is very popular. And that it seems they hold all the necessary information of how the disease is going to progress and metastasize. The gene expression assay, mainly based on microarrays, because we would like to know all the gene expression profile of all genome, not selectively by other assays like real-time PCR, for example. And of course, the viability assays, which help us verify or reject what information we receive through the epigenetic analysis. This is how we are nowadays. We have the major facilities in Greece, the headquarters in Switzerland, branches around the world. All the pipelines generate candidate drugs, which the intellectual properties are passing to the pharmaceutical company in Bristol, in the UK, which collaborates with the rest. And at the same time, we participate in private clinics and hospitals around the world, mainly in German-speaking worlds. The reason is the legislation there. We would like to have more flexible healthcare abilities. What we are trying to cover, the major triangle of healthcare. We try to provide efficient diagnostic in the area of cancer. We try to generate new candidate substances with therapeutic abilities, and we try to offer better healthcare services. Let's start with a little bit of scientific background. I don't know how much uh, familiar you are with molecular techniques, but I would like to make it as simple as it can. Starting with the basic features of cancer. This is a very popular diagram which specifies the major features of cancer. Cancer is immortalized, are immortalized cells, abnormal cells, that they do not respond to uh, anti-growth signals. They do respond to growth signals. They multiply endlessly. In order to be supplied in oxygen and nutrients, they develop new vessels towards the tumor, and of course, they evade apoptosis and they invade to the normal healthy tissue in order to metastasize. So they are able to migrate to distant organ. These are the major hallmarks. But it's not so easy because the major uh, process of carcinogenesis is based on genetic instability. Cancer is genetic unstable and mainly in the level of epigenetic, of how the genes are expressed. So at the end, we have a tumor, which is consist, consists of multiple subclones, subpopulation, with different features and abilities to respond to therapies and different behaviors. 
So far, in order to detect in clinical practice a tumor, to diagnose a tumor, we use the, these diagnostic methods. But no matter how sensitive these methods could be, we have calculated that the best limit which they can reach is 10 in the ninth cancer cell inside a body, which is approximately a little bit less than half of a centimeter. Less than this diameter, it's almost impossible to detect a malignancy. So we need something which is much more accurate. To define the diagnosis of cancer, of course, oops, we need a biopsy. But what we see in a biopsy? Again, we have a lump, which almost half or even more of the cancers from a lump consist the stroma. Stroma is actually normal cells, not malignant. So the other half of the cells consist these subclones of cancerous cells. But how many of those are able to invade and 